Hello everyone and welcome to the No Boring Pneumatics YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the calculation of mass flow rate from an air, air reservoir. Uh, and um, we have for this different application usually in our engineering daily tasks. So for example, uh, I noticed that uh, once I had to calculate the uh, mass flow rate uh, through the hole uh, from the uh, tire. Or uh, in case we have, for example, leaks, or we just want to calculate flow characteristics from the open pipe uh, through the valve, or not through the valve, every, everywhere where we have the exhaust and the air. And um, let's break it down now in a physical model. What we have in a physical model and what as assumption uh, we need to take to calculate it. So in our air reservoir, the air is still. So we don't have any uh, thermodynamical work that has to be done there. So no volume changing work and also pressure changing work. We also uh, don't have any heat exchange here. So these two here are zero. What we have here, air uh, containing our air reservoir has certain properties. It's under a certain pressure level, has a temperature and also density. The air goes out of the air reservoir with a certain mass flow rate through the hole that has the surface A that is actually depends on the diameter. So it's P times uh, D square, so you know it, divided by four, and I have a mass flow rate. And the air goes with a certain uh, pressure also out. It's an ambient pressure in this case, temperature and the density. Our question is now how we calculate mass flow rate from this air reservoir. Let's go to the basics and just remind ourselves what is the mass flow rate and what it depends on. So it, of course it depends, mass flow rate depends on the uh, passage that it has to pass through. So this is basically our diameter of the hole. It depends on the density of air and also depends on the velocity. So we have here velocity, density, and the surface. So the question is, uh, of course, how we calculate the air velocity. So I don't want to bother you on the derivation of the second and first laws of thermodynamics. So you just need to trust me or check any thermodynamical books right now. It depends on the adiabatic coefficient that is constant 1.4. It depends on the density and also pressure levels. And here we have again pressure levels and densities. So let's go and uh, now we're going to create some magic. So we combine both uh, equations that I just presented, the equation for the mass flow rate and the velocity. And then voila, we're getting a wonderful equation for the mass flow rate and this is the final equation. So what we have here, we have here uh, surface, we have here uh, density and uh, pressure level, and we have this beautiful thing that also depends on the velocity. We we'll call it outflow function. So you can find different names of this function, but it's usually just this flow characteristic function. So then it uh, becomes actually a very interesting question. Uh, is this function uh, always constant? Is it a uh, what it depends on. So this function depends actually because it depends on the velocity and we know that the maximum velocity that uh, the air can reach it can be higher than the uh, sound velocity, velocity of the sound. And um, there is a certain uh, area uh, in, in, the, in the air that uh, when the uh, relation between the P1 and P2, the flow, the, the pressure before and after is uh, 0 0.528. We call it a critical pressure when the mass flow rate cannot be bigger. So it is this point on this diagram. So as you can see here, we have our outflow function and here we have our um, uh, pressure critical pressure ratio, or it is a B value. So we call it B. And this is our flow uh, function here. And uh, 
there is a point that we can change the ratio for P2 and P2, so after the reservoir, inside the reservoir. So after reservoir, we have uh, our ambient pressure. So we can we change it and uh, the difference of the pressure is rising. And of course, the flow rate outflow, uh, the flow rate is rising. So outflow function is rising. But then uh, it reaches the point where the velocity cannot go higher cannot be higher than the velocity of sound and we reach also the certain Mach, Mach number. And in this case, uh, we can change as we want our pressure ratio here, our B value here, critical pressure, but the flow rate already reached the maximum level. And in the in compressed air, this number is 0 0.528. We call it a critical pressure for the ideal nozzle. We will talk about this in the next videos. And the maximum uh, function from this, it's 0 0.484. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that we have uh, two various areas here. We have the supercritical and anticritical areas here. Uh, one area where is the uh, this function, the outflow fun function is a constant and another area where we need to calculate it. So in the next videos, we will also uh, see how the equation will change for the mass flow rate for valves, for example. So where we have a certain pressure level before and after valve and uh, how we need to find and understand in which uh, condition we are in a supercritical and the critical. So, this was our introduction video for the flow characteristics and uh, please be sure that you're subscribed to our No Boring Pneumatics channel with the, with the Elvira and uh, provided by Directing and um, yeah, enjoy engineering your systems. <laughs>